President, uh, Dr. Gorker was very clear in saying this has been the biggest, biggest wedge between the two countries. Nobody knows what was said privately between them. Putin is denying it. You know, the idea that he has something. But here's, I think, the most important part that we've got to get into, and that is at some point, we need to have the specific evidence, and the double standard is glaring in this particular case as it relates to the servers, as it relates to the emails that are missing. And at some point, we've got to say, where, are, where is this evidence as well? Because we want to know who knew what, when, and where. Look, Sean, let, let, me, um, let me address the question of how everybody's reacting to the press or on the left. But first, a reminder with regards to what you mentioned earlier. John Brennan, who's accusing the president of being a traitor, voted for the Communist Party at the height of the Cold War in 1976, when the Soviet Union actually wanted to destroy America. That's treasonous. Vladimir Putin is a bad guy. He's a bad actor. But the Russian Federation is not the Soviet Union. And as far as I know, Donald Trump never voted for the Communist Party at the height of the Cold War. So let's just put that on the record. With regard to the reactions to t today's summit, um, it, it's a little bit like the stroke testimony. You saw the unveiling of the deep state last week with strokes testimony. Today, you really saw the depths of the mainstream media. Nobody in that room behaved like a journalist. They were like members of moveon.org or the, or the resistance. The idea that we had a chance to talk about big issues, saving hundreds of thousands of lives in Syria, the question of Ukraine's national sovereignty, and instead they want to prepare perpetuate this bogus collusion narrative. They came out of the closet. There is no journalism on the mainstream media left, and it was absolutely shambolic.